Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a fragrant sweet box. This is Fragrant Sweet Box, an evergreen, shade-loving shrub that has these amazing, tiny, but super fragrant flowers in the late winter and early spring. Sweet Box can reach three to four feet in height and three to four feet in width over time. It's not the fastest growing thing in the world, so it'll take a while to get there. Sweet Box is best in zone seven to nine. Rarely gets hurt in zone seven, so I think putting it on a foundation in zone six B would be worth a try. Fragrant Sweet Box is a slow growing plant. We might get three or four inches of growth out of these in the ground each year once established. But for me, this is absolutely a perfect plant. I like plants that only grow three or four inches a year. It just means less maintenance. In terms of sun or shade on Sweet Box, this plant would not like a lot of midday sun. None of the 10 to two or 10 to four sun would be ideal. Any kind of early morning sun or late evening sun would be no big deal, but this plant would like a half a day sun or less. A great usage for fragrant sweet box is in a shade garden, especially in a dry shade space. A lot of things, it's so difficult to grow sometimes in dry shade, and this is actually one good choice for that. It also works well on a shaded foundation in any place you need to keep an evergreen shrub below three feet on the east or northeast side of your house. This would be a great choice. Fragrant Sweet Box blooms in the late winter or early spring. It has a very small white flower. It's kind of insignificant, but you can smell it a mile away. It's very similar to a tea olive in that regard where you really don't see the flowers, but the fragrance is absolutely amazing. It's very similar in growth habit to a winter Daphne and blooms about the same time as a winter Daphne, but it's definitely a lower maintenance plant than a winter Daphne. One of the main considerations when we're planting sweet box is going to be that it dries out between rains or between watering. So we're going to want to elevate this plant some. That would be especially true if you're going to use it as a foundation plant because foundations can typically stay wetter than a woodland garden, which would be the other option for this plant. So we're going to want to dig the hole, the depth of the root ball, and then maybe twice as wide as the root ball and put some of the loose soil back into the bottom of the hole so that when we set this plant into the ground, it actually ends up elevated about two inches. The other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is if you have clay soils, especially clay soils, you're gonna to wanna to mix some pine bark soil conditioner or something chunky in with them. We're actually growing these in a pine bark soil conditioner mix that's been composted. You can get this at any of the garden centers and mix that 50-50 with the clay. So you're gonna pull your soil out of the hole, you'll have your little pile of clay, mix the pine bark 50-50 and use that. Put about two inches of that in the bottom, then set your plant in. Use the rest of that mix to pull up to the edge of the plant. You can lightly mulch this plant. Do not bury it very deep in mulch. Don't cover anything that's not covered when you get it. If you mulch this plant three or four inches, you're almost certainly gonna kill it. You know, water it's gonna become waterlogged and it's gonna kill it. If you had very sandy soils, you might consider using some compost or some peat moss, but I would shy away from using a lot of anything that's gonna keep this plant wet between rains. In terms of watering sweet box, once this plant is established, I think you'll do very, very little watering on it. Obviously, if you put it in a wooded garden, that's gonna keep it dry like it would like to be, but everything has a limit to how dry it can be. And trees are very, very good at stealing water from your plants. So typically, if you were gonna use this plant in a wooded space like that, a few times during the summer, you probably are gonna to have to add some water to it. A lot of times when you plant in wooded spaces like that, it's probably best to just go ahead and put a drip hose down. So in the future, you can just hook a water hose up to it and water a lot of plants at the same time. It's also very, the most water efficient way to water, the most efficient way to water and use the least amount of water possible when you're watering your plants. Uh, if it's on a foundation, like I said, once this plant's established, you might check on it a few times for the first six or nine months. And then after that, I think you'd rarely, rarely ever have to water this plant if you're in an area that receives kind of normal rainfall, at least, at least once or twice a month you're getting rain. I would definitely fertilize sweet box in the spring. This will flower in February, March in North Carolina here. So late winter and very, very early spring. Uh, a little later if you tried it in zone 6B. 
after it flowers, that's probably when I would fertilize it. You can use any slow release fertilizer. This is an acid loving plant. So if you used a fertilizer like Holly Tone, that would be perfect. That's a great organic option or probably any slow release fertilizer that would last three or four months and then run out in late summer. We wouldn't want this plant pushed from midsummer on. It needs to kind of go into a natural dormancy. If it's still growing in the late summer, early fall, that growth from the end of the season will almost certainly be burned in the winter and then probably cost you quite a few flowers. This is such a slow growing plant, it's probably rarely ever gonna need to be pruned. If you need to prune it, I do it after it flowered in the early spring. You'll occasionally get one crazy limb here or there on it and you can just cut that back anytime. I'd probably just take that back to near the base of the plant. But really this is not a plant that's gonna need a lot of maintenance in that regard. It just doesn't grow quick enough to have to prune it every year. This is a plant that really doesn't get chewed by anything. We rarely see any foliar problems on this plant. The main enemy really of a fragrant sweet box is root rot. This plant is susceptible to Phytophthora root rot. If you planted this plant flush and put four inches of mulch on it and watered it once a week, almost certainly you would experience that very quickly and it would not recover from it once this plant gets root rot, it's pretty much dead. And it's best to make sure you follow best practices and raise this plant, elevate this plant, mulch it very lightly, and you should be fine. Like a lot of fragrant plants, sweet box is pretty much deer proof. They rarely, rarely will ever sample this plant. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the low maintenance, shade loving, winter fragrant flowering, fragrant sweet box. Thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any additional questions you might have about Sweetbox. Thank you again.